Thanks for staying with us. The chairman of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, during a briefing today in Abuja, said plans were being made about reopening schools. The secretary to the government of the Federation urged stakeholders to begin to take steps that would aid the reopening of schools in the country. To discuss this is Onyi Damola Egbenyi, director of the Foreshaw School, Ikoyi, and still with us is Dr. Tuyi Mebawodu, public health practitioner. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the show tonight. Thanks for having me. Now, Onyi, I'm going to start with you. Um, Nigeria currently has over 8,000 cases of COVID-19. Would you support the reopening of schools at this time? Um, I wouldn't support the reopening of anything unless there are proper health and safety measures that are put in place. Because, I mean, we need to remember that we're a densely populated country. We can't really take anything lightly and put people at any unnecessary risks. While I also believe that, as an educationist, education must continue. It's something that is uh, on a continuous spectrum. Education cannot stop. Um, I wouldn't suggest the physical reopening of schools until we're sure of health and safety measures and a, a very well thought out and put together plan that is practical. Now, as an educationist, in 2018, Nigeria was ranked 171st in the world for its investment in education. Do you see renewed efforts on the part mm -hmm. of the government to solve in, um, investment issues when it comes to education and improve on it in Nigeria going forward? Yeah, um, you know what? Um, I was just having a discussion about this earlier today. So with regards to investments in education, I think um, over the past year, or well, I may not be able to speak for the federal government because I'm clo I have closer ties with the legal state government, I would say that a lot of thought, a lot more thought has been going into education and essentially prioritizing it. I know that the budget for Lagos State has increased significantly. I think it's more than doubled now. So that alone is an indication that there's more thought that's going into education. People, I think, are coming to see the lapses in various parts of the economy as a result of gaps in education. And we're also beginning to realize that human capital could really be our greatest strength. So I think the gov I think there is a lot of there, there are a lot of conversations about investments in education. I know that there are a lot of um, a lot of interactions with part, uh, with interactions with the private sector and also international bodies with regards to where people can come in and support because education is it's, it's vast. The issues are I'll just say incredible. Trying to be positive, but. The, a lot of help is needed in that sector. So I think that the mindset is beginning to shift towards more investment and more development. By phone now, we lost connection right there on Zoom. Dr. Tuyi, thank you for staying still with us. Yeah, thank you. No, so I need your quick take on the, the possible reopening of schools as has been conversed in many quarters in government. What is your take on this? There's a, there are clear court criteria if you need to reopen school. Now, the point is that you must have a clear understanding of the level of your infection. Have you done enough tests? Secondly, what are the things you put in play for, to ensure that you don't have transmission of infection? Parents don't bring infection to children. Children don't take infection from school to the home. So what are the, those things that you have put in place? You cannot then just wait and expose that large population to massive infection of this sort. So for me, I think the government needs to be a bit cautious. There's not, no need to rush. We've come this far. We must be able to have a clearer criteria for reopening those schools. Or else, we might, this might need to spiral in of the number of infection okay because there's no way you can't open school and obey the social distancing order you can't all right only let me let me come to you only now i mean in, in the light of this yeah. even if they should go ahead and reopen the schools in in your own um opinion as an educationist and an expert 
What, what kind of guidelines and measures are you expecting will be in place for the physical reopening of schools? Okay. Um, okay, that's a very broad question because there are different types of schools with different strategies and populations. I would say that um, even, I mean, before even thinking about the guidelines, I think a lot of data will be required in terms of the um, rate of testing and the, rate, the infection rates. I think most countries where, um, where reopenings are happening are actually, well, I wouldn't say that what everyone, I mean, I wouldn't endorse what everyone, anyone is doing, but what I've noticed as a trend is that, or particularly in New York, that they're noticing a decline in the rate of infection. So at least that's an indication of when or how reopening should be done. But in terms of the actual logistics, um, I think that um, there needs to be a plan that's realistic. Like I said, um, I would say, okay, for example, public schools, have much larger populations than a private school of my size. Like in my school, we have classes as small as seven students or 15 students. Our largest class is like 20 students. So in terms of putting in certain practices, it's, I wouldn't say it's easier for us, but it is more manageable because by virtue of the way our, well, the four short school is structured, our classes, social distancing can actually be achieved in our classrooms because the classrooms are quite large and there's enough space in between in between the students. For public schools, they would have to um, review the spacing, the capacity and spacing issues. They might have to, um, they might have to have um, like discussions with their communities, perhaps using churches or community halls as classrooms instead of their regular classrooms that might be congested. They would have to think of perhaps staggering the opening times of, well, everybody would have to think about staggering perhaps opening times of schools, the schedules for the teachers, schedules for students, um, different practices, even like um, it, it, um, instances where people would need to commune, such as like lunchtime, playtime, they would need, and even assemblies, they would, there would need to be a lot of thoughts that would go into whether or not these things should happen at all unless necessary or if they can there can be ways around carrying them out properly um like for lunch for instance i don't think anyone would want to go and eat like in the communal dining room where whereas they could perhaps just have their packed lunch in their classrooms where they are already socially distanced but um in terms of actually like carrying all of this out i think a lot of um like testing and sampling needs to be done okay. first okay. and like if a, a proper phased out program such that we're not rushing into doing anything at all with multiple schools with multiple children and so on if there's like perhaps maybe a like a sample like i don't know like i mean i studied science so we always it's always good to start with perhaps oh, yeah. a sample size okay. see how things work out all right oh you just you just hold your thoughts right there let me go to yeah. dr Tui quickly dr Tui. now let's let's bond a little bit if you will on the schooling um the school feeding program which the federal government started before the pandemic do you support its continue con for it to continue when schools get reopened by by any means uh, the school feeding has a lot of uh, issues and queries about it especially when those children were at home. Okay, now, the key point is this. These children will be interacting with other children from different homes. We'll be interacting with the teachers from different homes. They have to commit themselves back home, not necessarily through their public, they have to go through public transport, essentially. Now, the question is that, how many of those people can you vouch that they are not having or, or carrying COVID-19? That's the question. Now, I rather prefer that the process of feeding these children is staggered in such a way that if possible, it should be incorporated into the parents' preparation of food for them while they are coming to school. And this can easily be done. Because through the individual school, if those money were given to them, it can be pushed into the parents' hand to prepare those food for them to take it. Okay. Now, okay. if you have to open the school, it means that you must have provision for social distancing. 
provision for hygiene. If you have to face the school opening, like one, two, three days, and then the rest of the day, they can then learn online. So it can't be as it used to be, especially in public schools. It can be. Okay. All right, Dr. Tsui. Now, let me, finally, let me come to you, um, Oyin Damala. What lessons do you think we need to take hold of in, in the formulation of educational policy post-COVID-19? Finally, please. Okay. Um, I think we need to, oh, um, to go back and review everything that we've been doing in the past and try to reinvent things because education is not, it's not going to, it's, nothing is ever going to be the same again. And education is not excluded for this. We need to review all our policies around teaching and learning. Well, most especially around teaching and learning and curriculum development, how the curriculum is delivered to the children and what skills are being taught to the children. I mean, COVID has revealed that, look, we have to look for other ways to, to teach. And there's always been a discussion around 21st century teaching um, statewide and even like with private schools. So this is really revealing to us the criticality of moving the educational system forward. So I think that public policy development would have to be in line with the situation now, everything that has been revealed, and also with global practices because our education needs to be relevant. Onye Damala Egbeyemi, educationist, thank you for your time and for joining us on the show tonight. Thank you. All right, thanks for having me. And also, um, public health practitioner, Dr. Tuyi Mebaondu, thank you for your time, sir, and for your in-depth contribution on the show also tonight. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us, and when we return, I will give you my take. Here is my take. I think the controversy exists because the drug has not undergone the various stages of preclinical and clinical trials to ascertain the efficacy and safety as a drug of choice in treating COVID-19, perhaps because of the desperation to have a drug for the disease. Let's all wait and allow the drug to go through the complete clinical trial and get certified as efficacious by the relevant authorities before jumping at it. And whatever is agreed in outline for the reopening of schools, there will be sticking points like older and vulnerable teachers, pupils living with grandparents or other ill relatives, challenges around discipline in relation to social distancing, parents who may have reluctance to send children back to school, and also how to make up for all the lost seasons and lessons, and younger primary children who have missed chunks of literacy and numerous learning. But for now, the more urgent question then, when schools will reopen are why and how. That's it. Not why people want children to return to school, which is clear enough, but why schools in May, June or September will be any safer for pupils, their families and teachers than they are now. The feasibility of physical distancing measures is already the subject of debate, with experts tending towards the view that they won't work for the youngest children. How to make it possible for teachers and older children to keep their distance and to what extent it is worthwhile spacing out decks given the narrowness of corridors and other factors is under discussion. All these and other factors remain things to consider in making this decision. And that's all we can take on the show for tonight. Plus Politics will return same time tomorrow. Until then, stay safe and be well. And news on the hour will be up shortly.